So should you do Amazon FBA or should you do Shopify drop shipping? What's going on everybody? Your boy Juan Valdez back with another video and today I'm going to be going over some of the differences between doing Amazon FBA, for those of you guys that don't know what FBA is, fulfillment by Amazon, and Shopify dropshipping, and just some of the differences between the two. Now, for those of you guys that are brand new to my channel, welcome on over. This is the VFAM. The VFAM is a family of individuals that are striving to do a lot more than what society has out for us to do. To kind of get started, if you guys want to see a lot more videos where I'm comparing, you know, different opportunities, maybe, you know, drop shipping to affiliate marketing, drop shipping versus like social media marketing or any other business opportunities, you know, feel free to drop a like on this video. And of course, if you have any questions along the way, make sure you drop a comment below and I'll get back to you guys and respond. I want to let you guys know that I actually don't do Amazon FBA, but I know people that do. The way that I gathered my information is simply by doing some research on you know uh, how it all works just looking some facts up on the internet of course that's what we all used to get all our information and i just asked some of my buddies that actually do amazon fba you know how it works and kind of double check with them but of course if along the way i make any mistakes on something that you know i said that isn't how it's supposed to no big deal you know i'm only human so you know work with me on that and what i also did is i actually put together some notes to kind of go over with you guys I'm gonna have it actually on my phone. Uh, don't worry, I'm not gonna be looking away texting people. Uh, obviously, I wouldn't do that to you guys. I actually put together some notes here that I'm gonna be going over, so if you see me looking away, that's why. I believe that both opportunities are great opportunities, right? I know people that crush it with Amazon FBA, and I know people that crush it with Shopify dropshipping just like I do, right? So of course, I'm not gonna say like, oh, only do this or only do that. I think they're both good opportunities. Now. I do believe the skills that one of them requires end up being a lot more valuable in the long run than the other. And I will also get into that. Amazon FBA, for those of you guys that don't know what it is, it's pretty simple. It's pretty much the way that Amazon FBA works. Again, fulfillment by Amazon is first, obviously, you, you know, you're going to do your product research and you find the products that you like, not that you like, that are actually selling, doing pretty well. After you know, you find these products, what you do is you then find a supplier that you can work with. After you find a supplier, you get them to actually ship you all the products. You have to pay up front to get all the products shipped to an Amazon warehouse. They fully hold, you know, all the inventory for you and they take care of, you know, all that whole process. And now after you work on, you know, doing your ranking, your SEO and all that great stuff on Amazon, you get to take advantage of their free traffic. And after somebody buys your product, they take care of the whole fulfillment process. So, you know, it is pretty neat. And for those of you guys that don't know what Shopify dropshipping is, you set up your Shopify store, you do your product research. From there, you then go on AliExpress, uh, get whatever product that you found that seems to be selling pretty well, put it on your Shopify store, you then drive traffic. After you drive traffic, somebody buys, then you then go ahead and take the customer's info and the money that they obviously use to buy the product, and you go on AliExpress and you pay for the product to be shipped out to the customer, that the supplier sends it out, and then boom. You know what I'm saying? That's the whole business. Yeah, and that's basically how they both work. So what I wanted to do now is kind of go over some pros and cons, you know, between the two, just to kind of give you guys a comparison. And then at the end, I'll kind of give you guys my thoughts on which one I think uh, is a better opportunity. So to kind of get started, again, I have the notes here on the side, so if you see me looking away, that's why. Now with Amazon FBA, right, to kind of get started with Amazon FBA, it does require some startup capital. What I've noticed is from the things that I've seen online and some of the people that I've looked up and researched, usually you need about a thousand dollars to get started because you have to buy the products up front and it looks like you usually have to order anywhere from like 200 to 500 units of that product of course with any new opportunity you usually have to invest to learn how it all works so now you have the investment of learning how it all works which you have to take care of so that's one investment and then you also have to invest in the products to kind of get started so that's one thing i'm not a huge fan of because again you guys know with shopify drop shipping uh, you know you can literally set up a free shopify account which in case if you guys wanted to do that i actually have a link down below in the description you guys can click the link there and you can literally make a free account with shopify you get 14 days absolutely free to check out the platform learn how it all works and all that great stuff you know after you set up your free shopify account you know obviously there's no other fees because you don't have to order the products right so all you do from there is again we're going to go into that but pretty much that's how you get started right you don't have to order the products up front that's one of the main differences between amazon FBA and Shopify dropshipping. You know, Amazon, you have to order the products up front. Shopify dropshipping, you don't. So that's one of the main differences. I'm not a huge fan of having to order all the products up front just because, again, you could go through problems where, again, you don't, your inventory doesn't sell, your product may die out. 
you never know what can happen. I'd much rather drop ship the product where I'm having people come in and buy the product first and then I order the product to them. So that's just my personal opinion. But the next one is BA. It does require a little bit more time doing the research because you're not testing as many products as you are with Shopify dropshipping. Now, I don't know exactly why that is. I've seen a few videos of some guys that do Amazon FBA, and it looks like it, it does require a little more in-depth research on what products you're gonna sell. I think maybe after you find a good product, maybe you don't have to you know, consistently keep testing to find new ones. I'm not sure how it works, actually. I don't wanna give you guys the wrong information on that one. I just know that based on what they've said, it looks like it requires, you know, just like Shopify dropshipping, you know, in-depth product research. I'm not saying that Shopify dropshipping requires a less you know detailed product research process but I'm, i think i believe that with amazon fba it sounds like it's a little more in depth with amazon fba the product life cycles once you find a good product the life cycle where it, it ends up performing really well where you get the most amount of sales or when it's selling really well the lifelong value of it seems to be a lot longer than with Shopify dropshipping. Usually, just like you guys have seen when the fidget spinners came around, the lifespan that it had when, it, when, you know, when the sales were really good for anyone that was selling fidget spinners, it's the average is like, you know, four to six months around that. That's when you get the prime time where like you find a hot product and it crushes it. And then after that, it usually slows down. So that's why you wanna consistently do research to find new products. Now with Amazon, uh, it looks like, you know, on average, the products usually end up doing really well way longer than four to six months, right? It's looking like up to a year. That's just one of the main differences. That is one of the pros about doing Amazon FBA. But again, there's like, you know, with Shopify dropship, we'll get into that. But that's one of the pros that I personally, that the, you know, the lifetime value of each product when it's doing really well is a lot longer than dropshipping. So that's one. Now, when it comes down to it, it is harder to build a brand and a niche around specific products on Amazon FBA just because again you know when people are coming on there they're not seeing like they're not getting attached to the product like your store they're not seeing all these different cool images things like that that's super important because usually what sells a lot of people when it comes to Shopify dropshipping when they come to your store and they see that you have you know nice images nice ad you know different products upsells and downsells different products that they can buy with that same product they came in to get all these different things that gives them it gives the person a, a much stronger connection uh, with the products that they're looking to buy because now they see that you know they're coming in they're seeing other products just like it it's just a different vibe right so it, it's not really the same when you go on amazon you usually just buy that product yeah you have some products that you get upsell to but like there's no real connection you're just going on there you're doing it and you know it's amazon right you can't really build a brand outside of amazon it's every, because all the products are on there so that's one of the things that i'm not a huge fan of because again one of the way, and we're gonna get into that, one of the strategies that we like to take advantage of is actually brand building and the fact that we can branch out and you know have full control of our customers. So that's one of the cons for sure. The next one that I actually am not a huge fan of either is that you don't get to keep the customer data, right? You don't get to keep their emails. You know, any of the data that, that comes in through Amazon, they keep, right? So obviously I'm not a huge fan of that because again, one of the Shopify dropshipping strategies that I go over with you guys is really how to make money on the back end, you know, with your customers after you get them to come to your store, right? Either if they abandon cart or if they did buy, you know, following up through emails and a whole lot more. You know, I'm huge on building a back end business with Shopify dropshipping. So the fact that, you know, with Amazon FBA, I can't get their emails kind of makes me miss out on, you know, a ton of money because uh, we make a, a lot of back-end money so the fact that if we didn't get any emails we'd be losing out on a ton so for me i'm not a huge fan of the fact that you cannot get their emails and keep any of the customer data because it's their customers so again you can't you know you can't the chances of you getting repeat customers you know customers to, to refer other people uh to buy from your store so, i mean obviously you get the reviews on amazon of course for them but to have them not be able to give a review on your own website kind of limits you a little bit you know specifically because again having your own website outside of amazon is huge obviously they're the, one of the biggest e-commerce companies so they get all this traffic but having something outside of amazon is a lot more important because these is once you have a customer's information a customer's email this is a customer's uh, a point in contact that you have pretty much for life so whenever you have any new products new offers you can always remarket to them rather than with amazon you always have to you know drive them back to amazon to get it and that's the only way they're going to see your new offers and your new products so i'm not a huge fan of that 
but there obviously there is ways around it i guess for the people that do amazon you know they don't really count on making back-end money but obviously they, they take it to take advantage of the free traffic which we'll get into with amazon fba they do take care of your order fulfillment process which is huge uh literally they take care of everything contacting the customer you know do everything from step a to z with order fulfillment they take care of it again with shopify drop shipping you guys know that pretty much at first you have to fulfill the orders so once a customer buys you take their information you take obviously the money that they paid for the product uh, a part of it after you take your profits of course you got to make sure you eat and you take your profit and then you go on aliexpress and you then you know you pay for the product you submit all the information and then that supplier then sends it to the customer so at first you do have to do the order for filming yourself but later on and i'll actually be making more videos on this you can actually automate the whole order for filming process where you can hire an, an assistant for really cheap to completely take care of that whole order fulfillment process so you can you can focus on more important tasks that's just the difference between the two at first that you know with shopify drop shipping you do have to do it yourself amazon you'd never do so that's you know that is obviously a good pro that amazon has that's actually pretty cool uh, and i believe this is one of the things i'm not a huge fan of is that they take 15 percent of all of your total sales now obviously you know there's some percentage that when you you know for shopify drop shipping there's a percentage that goes into ad spend and things like that but again shopify doesn't take any percentage of your sales they do you know there is like some credit card transaction fees things like that but if you get like a highest plan you can get really low fees for that but besides that they don't take any fees so obviously i'm not a huge fan of the fact that amazon you know takes advantage or not takes advantage takes 15 percent of all your total profits i mean i do understand that you are getting the benefit of using their platform and also taking advantage of all the traffic that they get onto their obviously platform because obviously you guys know almost everybody nowadays shops with amazon so of course you do get to take advantage of the free traffic so it does kind of make sense but i'm personally just not a huge fan of the fact that they're taking 15 percent so that's one of the last things I kind of had to go over when it comes to Amazon FBA. For Shopify drop shipping, uh, a lot of you guys know may have already heard me talk about it. You know, to kind of get started again, it has super low startup costs, right? You can literally, again, you can literally get a 14 day free trial. You can start getting used to the platform, start looking how it all, you know, how it all works. Literally set a store up for free within 14 days. After the 14 days, then you have to pay the monthly fee. It's like, there's a minimum plan, which like, it's like $29, but, for 14 days, you can pretty much start a Shopify store for free. They don't charge you to set it up, none of that stuff. Now, from there, obviously, I'm a huge fan of that because for the people, you know, like you guys, and when I got started, and some of you guys that are watching, you may not be in the best situation where you can afford to spend a thousand dollars to order products up front without knowing if they're gonna sell or not. Of course, and you, know, you can do your product research with Amazon FBA, but I've heard of cases where you know people just get started, they order a ton of products, and it doesn't end up working out. So obviously, for me. I'm not huge into that. I much rather go the route where I can start testing products with very li very minimal capital and start, you know, seeing and learning what kind of thing, what kind of things work and what kind of things don't work. So that's just my take on it. Uh, one of the next ones is you do need some money to obviously to drive traffic to your store to start really like testing a lot more because you need money for Facebook ads, Instagram influencers, uh, pretty much any way that you're going to get paid traffic. You're going to need some money for that. Now I'm a huge fan of paid traffic because you get a lot more control. Once you figure out what works, you just have to increase your budget when it comes to paid traffic. And usually as long as the numbers hold true, if you're making double or triple the return and you increase your budget again, whatever your new budget is, you're going to be making double or triple your return. So I'm huge on paid traffic. Uh, I, I'm not the biggest fan of free traffic just because you can't really control it and it's not as scalable. Paid traffic is super scalable and that's why a lot of people are huge fans of it. So when it comes to like Facebook ads, that's obviously super scalable and Instagram influencers, you can obviously get, you know, and generate great results using the two to get traffic. So you, you do need some money to drive, drive traffic. That's what, that's when the actual cost or capital you know will be required but up until that point you can literally find hot products set up a store all that stuff without spending a dime so that's why i'm a huge fan of it now the next one is you don't get to take advantage of free traffic that is one of the downsides but again you know free traffic isn't everything you know paid traffic again is a lot more scalable and the only reason why it works really well for amazon fba is because they already have built such a big company 
that they get all these visitors daily. So of course, like the free traffic for them makes all the sense, right? Because they already have the brand, a trust, all that great stuff. So that's something that for anyone working on a Shopify dropshipping store, those are things you guys can work on along the way. You know, having, you know, building a brand, building that trust with customers and a whole lot more. It just takes some time to kind of get started. One of the reasons why I'm a huge fan of actually Shopify dropshipping is because again, you get to do things like again build a brand which we were just talking about and there's multiple ways you can do that by building different social media platforms having the emails that you can come in consistent you can stay in consistent contact you know with your customers on and a whole lot more and that's huge because that lets you scale really to the next level and have that brand that you can then branch out and sell numerous different products within you know if you have a general store if you have a niche store you can then do so you know with amazon doesn't really let you now one of the cons though with shopify drop shipping is that you usually do have to test a lot more to find your winning products that's going to really do well for you that's just part of the game again the reason why it's part of the game is because with shopify drop shipping you don't need a hundred different products to really get the results you're looking for usually you know, when we've had our biggest months, when we've done, you know, me and my business partner, Samir, have generated over 228 grand in one month. You know, we literally did that, the majority of those sales with one product, right? So you don't need a ton of different products to have, you know, really good months or to really crush it. So of course, if it doesn't take that many products to crush it, of course, the product research process is gonna be, you know, it's, it's gonna be a lot more in depth and you're gonna need to do a lot more testing. Of course, what I'm a huge fan of is the fact that you get to keep all the customer data with Shopify drop shipping. You get to keep their emails. Uh, you get to see like when they come into your store, how they browse, there's different apps that you can see literally the interaction that customers are having with your store live. You can see when a, someone comes in, the things they click on, everything, right? It's absolutely insane. And you get to keep all that information. So you get to find out different things like what attracts more customers, what kind of colors people like, what makes people buy, all these different things, right? And for me, that's super important because if you know, if you learn about human psychology, what makes people buy, what attracts customers, what doesn't, that's gonna be super beneficial, not only for your Shopify dropshipping business, but any other businesses that you build later on. So that actually transitioned and leads me on to my next point. The One of the reasons why I feel like Shopify dropshipping is you know, huge or a good opportunity or the skills that go behind it are a lot more valuable than Amazon FBA is because you know with Shopify dropshipping, if you can master the skills of being able to set up a website that actually converts, learning all the psychological biases that really go into play, you know, that really make people come in from a cold visitor to actually buying, if you're able to learn that, also how to research different products that sell within the marketplace, and you learn how to drive paid traffic you know, to that website to, you know, take advantage of obviously the good site you put together, but also learn how to build a back end system where, you know, after somebody buys, you're able to then generate more revenue on the back end. If you're able to learn all those different skill sets in one and really master it, you're literally gonna have a skill set that you'll be able to use not only again for your Shopify dropshipping business, but if you decide to start any other business as well. Right? So that's obviously huge because I for me personally I look for opportunities where when I go in there, the skill sets that I'm going to learn is going to be a lot more than just for that business, right? I want to see how I can scale it up and then, you know, do it, use that same skill sets for other opportunities. So for me, that's huge just because I see the fact that, you know, learning like Facebook ads is super powerful, right? Learning about websites and what makes people buy, super powerful, right? The cognitive biases, all that great stuff. You know that's obviously super powerful so for me personally i'm a obviously a huge fan of shopify dropshipping just because that's what i i've gotten their success and results with but also because of the skill sets that go behind it i actually made a video talking about you know why i decided to choose shopify dropshipping compared to any other opportunity and that's the main reason why that was pretty much everything i had to kind of compare both Amazon FBA and Shopify dropshipping. Again, I think they're both good opportunities, but I do think that the skills that you learn within you know, building a successful Shopify dropshipping business do overweigh the skills that you learn by the skills that you learn with Amazon FBA. So that's just my personal opinion. If you guys want to see more videos of me comparing different business opportunities, of course, drop a like on this video. And if you guys have any questions between trying out Amazon FBA or trying out Shopify dropshipping, drop your questions below. I'll be responding to all you guys. And of course, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, join the VFAM, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.